Is 2v2 finally back? With buffs to conquest gains and solo shuffle queues getting longer every day, the 2's bracket is seeing more activity in Season 2. Today, we'll break down the meta and give you some options for the best comps to play this season in 2v2. We will start with a tier list for DPS, but be sure to watch until the end where we will be ranking every healer. As a disclaimer, most of the comps we will mention are healer DPS setups, but we've included some options for all of you double DPS chads. We will start with the most popular and meta-dominant comps in the bracket, which you're likely to encounter in the majority of your games. Kicking off our list as arguably the best 2v2 spec in the game is Subtlety Rogue. Look, there's a reason why Sub is some of the highest representation in the bracket. Above all else, rogues are really good at avoiding damage. Whether it be through their lockdown, defensive cooldowns, or by the ability to wean their opponents, Sub Rogue is well equipped to take minimal damage while constantly posing a threat with the infamous Cold Blood Secret Technique combo. These days, what defines a good 2v2 spec is not just how much pressure you can deal, but how good you are at mitigating damage once dampening starts to hurt. By definition, Sub Rogue is an obvious winner. Of course, rogues aren't alone in the S tier. Just like Clockwork, Survival Hunter has climbed the ranks once again as one of the meta-defining 2v2 specs. Survival's consistent damage output combined with scripted CC setups make it a bane for any healer in the bracket, where it is a massive execution test of cooldown trading. In the head-to-head -head matchup against Sub Rogue, it's not exactly clear who has the advantage, but against the rest of the meta, Survival should have positive win rates. Just like rogues, hunters are exceptionally good at avoiding damage in 2v2, and with one of the best tier sets in 10.1, survival should be even more threatening in weeks to come in the bracket that it is all about dealing and avoiding damage. Rounding out the melee side of the S tier, we have Fury Warrior. While they might not be as dominant as Sub Rogue or Survival Hunter, Warriors are still a solid option in the 2v2 meta. With a slight buff to Slaughterhouse and nerf to Sharpen Blade in 10.1, Fury might be on track to outpace Arms as the premier Warrior spec in Arena. Even though Warrior might be at a strict disadvantage against Hunters and Rogues, the class is still propped up by its consistent damage output and powerful healing reduction effects, which add to the looming pressure of dampening. While the 2v2 bracket this season is home to a few heavy hitters on the melee side of things, both Destro and Demonology Warlocks have shaped up to be just as strong in the Season 2 meta. Of course, the relative strength of Destro Warlock is tied to its output, where it has multiple instant cast sources of damage, all of which can hit incredibly hard. With 10.1 adding Soul Rip as an optional PvP talent, Warlocks have another form of healing reduction, adding an additional layer to their insanely high damage output. Demo continues to be strong despite being weaker overall compared to its Season 1 form. The advantage Demo continues to have over Destro is the ability to stun while in CC. While this might seem minor, it means that Demonology can be a difficult matchup for Sub Rogues with a single axe toss ruining a setup. Right now, these are the best overall specs for 2v2. Now, if you don't see your spec mentioned here, don't worry. There are plenty of specs capable of climbing even to the highest ratings. And as a reminder, if you want to improve fasting at the rating you've always wanted, then check out SkillCapped.com. Stop wasting your time grinding thousands of games only to see no progress. With SkillCapped, you'll uncover the secrets to climbing fast that only take a few minutes to learn and can be immediately applied to your next game. The best part? It's completely risk-free to try, as you're kept safe with our rating game guarantee. If you don't significantly improve while actively using skill cap, then you get your money back, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Get the rank you've always wanted by clicking the link in the description below. Alright, now back to the video. With our most dominant specs out of the way, we have to drop down to the A tier melee, starting with Arms Warrior. Arms continues to earn its title as one of the most attrition-based melee in the bracket, generally winning games through long periods of sustained pressure. Unfortunately, the nerf to Sharpen Blade at the start of the season might have hurt the relative standing of Arms compared to other melee, but we still think it is easily one of the best specs in the bracket overall and performs well at every single rating. The same is true for Feral Druid, who some people might argue is actually a tier higher. For now, we will be keeping Feral on the A tier since it seems to have a losing matchup into equally skilled Rogue and Survival Hunter teams. With that said, its matchup spread against everyone else is fairly decent, and with Cyclone being much easier to land in 2v2, Feral is able to get more value out of the new Wild Attunement PvP talent. Another spec that could actually be Sleeper OP this season is Assassination Rogue. Just like Arms Warrior, Asa saw a moderate nerf to its empowered healing reduction mechanic, which certainly hurt its standing in the 2v2 bracket. At the moment, Assassination just seems a bit behind subtlety in terms of matchup spread. Both Rogue specs are very consistent and in the right hands are soft counters to many of the other high tiers. Next on our list is Demon Hunter. While 10.1 did offer DH some redesigned tech in the form of a buffed rain from above, 
Demon Hunter seems to be staying on the A tier for another season. One thing that could eventually help with standing is wider accessibility to tier sets which are designed around I-Beam. Because 2v2 has less players, that means a higher chance to benefit from Isolated Prey, which is a talent that grants a damage bonus to I-Beam as long as it hits a single target. Rounding out our high tier melee, we have Windwalker Monk, who seems to be on the A tier every time we make a 2v2 tier list. In many ways, Windwalker Monk is just an off-brand version of Sub Rogue, execution testing its opponents with massive one-shot damage, and then fleeing the fight while cooldowns reset. One soft weakness of Windwalker Monk is that Touch of Karma is severely nerfed in dampening. While this doesn't instantly make it useless, it is quite a significant difference from our other high tiers. Moving on to ranged DPS, BM Hunter makes a familiar appearance onto the high tiers this season, but now clearly behind survival in terms of raw performance. There's not much to say for our Beast Mastery friends, the biggest factor in determining its rankings simply comes down to how much consistent damage the spec is able to deal. In Season 1, BM saw a huge boost in rankings once tier sets were widely available, but now after losing one of the best set bonuses in the game, BM damage has fallen a bit flat. The change to CC reduction certainly didn't help, as the spec that relies solely on raw damage and scripted CC setups. The only other high tier ranged DPS currently is Balanced Druid, which historically doesn't rank high in our 2v2 tier list. 10.1 obviously provided Balanced Druids with a huge power spike in the meta, which is poured over into 2v2. Boomkins rely heavily on their PvE damage output to land kills, but lacking a reliable interrupt and having only one stun is why Boomkins often prefer to play with Resto Shamans. With our high tiers covered, it's time to go into the mid and low tier specs. As a disclaimer, being a mid tier doesn't necessarily mean you can't reach your goals, but will just mean a slightly harder time playing against the meta. First up, we have both of remaining hybrid melee. Despite Enhancement Shaman being overtuned in 3v3 and Solo Shuffle, they are far less threatening in 2v2, where games are won by attrition and being able to avoid damage for prolonged periods of time. Without a healing reduction effect, both of these specs suffer slightly in terms of their ability to deal consistent pressure. With that said, both Enhancement Shamans and Ret Paladins work well with Disc Priests, but can even work well with Sub Rogues for explosive double DPS experience. Rounding out our mid-tier melee is Outlaw Rogue. In every bracket, Outlaw is clearly lagging behind the other two Rogue specs, mostly because its damage output is quite lacking. With a possible major redesign on the horizon, we will have to wait and see if Outlaw can break out of the low tiers. Moving on to our mid-tier range DPS, we have Marksmanship Hunter. While its burst damage might still be threatening, Marks continues to lag behind the other Hunter specs in the bracket. Remember, being good in 2v2 involves both the ability to constantly avoid damage, which is a bit harder to do when you need to constantly plant your feet and hard cast aim shots. We're also including every mage spec on the B tier. With the meta favoring highly evasive melee, thousands of resto druids and oppressive warlock overlords, mages aren't really cut out for the 2v2 bracket. Fortunately for all of you rogue mage fanatics, the class does have some double DPS options this season. Finally, rounding out the mid tiers, we have our last two true hybrids. Both Shadow Priest and Elemental Shaman are two specs better equipped for 3v3 compared to 2v2. While 10.1 did include a major redesign to Shadow, these hybrid specs tend to feel a bit too slow in the bracket, and are total punching bags for many high tier melee. With that said, Shadow Priest is one of the few specs that works well with other DPS, where it can definitely play with Warlocks, Rogues, and Mages to high ratings. At this point we have to move down to the C tier, with Death Knights as our only melee representative. Overall, the DK class has suffered quite a bit on the balance side of things after getting repeated nerfs at the start of Season 1. One of the biggest obstacles facing DKs in 2v2 specifically is the increased level of dampening, which dramatically nerfs the effects of anti-magic shell and death strike. This leaves DKs in a very vulnerable position, without the consistent damage output to compensate. Our remaining two low tiers include Affliction Warlocks and Devastation Evokers, which are the weakest options for ranged DPS in the bracket. Again, Affliction just suffers the problem of being too slow for 2v2, where its rot pressure is less effective than the constant stream of damage offered by other specs. Devastation Evoker is arguably the worst DPS in the game for 2v2, since their win condition is super telegraphed, and they take considerable amounts of damage while relying almost exclusively on self-healing mechanics, which as we know, get crushed in deep dampening. With our DPS covered, let's wrap things up with a quick look at the healer meta in Season 2. Resto Druids are the best overall healer in 2v2. Now, if you're only looking at representation alone, it's clear that Disc is the more popular healer, but that doesn't necessarily mean it's better. 
Resto Druids has a few huge advantages over other healers in the bracket. For one, its raw output is almost unrivaled by any other healer, while also having the luxury of a near infinite mana bar with the ability to run away and drink. In fact, it's Resto Druid mobility which is at the core of why it's so powerful in 2v2. Remember what we've been repeating throughout this video, 2s is not just about dealing constant pressure, but also being able to easily avoid it. Not only can Resto Druids easily evade enemy damage, but they also have enough healing output to keep players topped even through high levels of dampening, which is something that Disc Priest struggles with. Now, we don't want to give you the impression that Disc Priest is bad. In the first few minutes of every game, Disc Priest has a slight advantage over other healers with its multiple defensive cooldowns combined with huge damage potential. While these tools give Disc Priest momentum in the early game, they don't necessarily carry as hard in deep dampening, which is where Resto Druids start to take the lead. So in shorter games, Disc Priest might be the better healer, but in longer, more attrition based battles, Resto Druids are the winners. With that said, we have our full tier list of healers organized by tier. Resto Druids and Disc Priests are clearly best in class, but as you can see, the A tier is relatively stacked. Restoration Shamans still represent one of the more aggressive healers in the bracket, and can carry the game with offensive support, especially now with tools like Lightning Lasso and Stormkeeper. Holy Priests might actually be Sleeper OP in 10.1. Although their healing output was relatively weak in Season 1, Holy has one of the best tier sets, which directly buffs their healing output and could allow them to become replacements for Disc Priests in many comps. Both Monk specs are also ranked highly. While Fist Weaver does provide a direct contribution on the damage side of things, it tends to suffer in deep dampening after some pretty significant nerfs to its healing output. Unfortunately, that leaves both Preservation Evoker and Holy Paladin as the worst healers overall in 2v2. While Evokers might be strong in 3v3 and solo shuffle, their healing output is too weak in deep dampening, which is the exact same problem faced by Holy Paladins. Alright guys, that wraps up today's 2v2 update. Let us know your thoughts in the comments below and tell us what comp you think is the best in Season 2. And while you're doing that, be sure to check out skillcap.com to learn how you can gain 400 rating this season risk-free. As always though, we'd like to thank you all for watching. See you soon.